Go. Hey Gio, how do you balance work, family, and faith? Hello everyone and hello Laura and thank you for your question. It's been a question that I'm sure a lot of women um, think about this. A lot of women struggle with this. It is something that I myself struggled with. It's something that even to answer this, I feel like oh, gut-wrenching because I know what I need to tell you. I know what's important um, uh, to be to be, to be be said. Um, so I just don't know about the receiving end. I don't know how you're going to receive this. And it doesn't even matter because truth needs to be uh, told. And I wish I had someone that would have shared this with me. I'm going to talk to you like I would my daughters. In fact, this is for my daughters. And all of you are my spiritual daughters. So it is. This is for my daughters. I love you and I hope you understand what I'm about to say. Okay, Laura, again, thank you for the boldness to ask a question that on the surface, you know, we're like, oh, okay, everybody struggle with that. But there's the root of that, getting to the root of that. So let's get unraveled, shall we? Um, first of all, the answers, the responses there were, were good. That, that was, you know, that was good. I appreciate Selena and I appreciate uh, Sandra and Patricia. Good insight. Here's the thing, okay? So, if someone is in the water and they're struggling to stay afloat, um, I would probably tell you, you know, you gotta kick your legs, you gotta paddle, you know, with your with your hands. Um, and so, I believe that a lot of times when we ask that question. And other women, uh, whether in the thick of it or meaning to or not meaning to, um, uh, mostly not meaning to, they give you instructions on how to paddle, how to keep your head above water, how to be able to breathe and keep it all together and your feet kicking so that you're at least your head is above water um, and, and, and giving you those instructions. Well, I want to tell you, uh, uh, not just, uh, you know, give you information on how to paddle, but hopefully give you some information that you're not um, in the water at all. You're not in the thick of it or drowning in it um, at all. Um, I, I need to start at the beginning, at the beginning. And, and the beginning is, of all beginnings, is Genesis. Genesis tells us why we were created. Um, as women, we were created to be helpers, to be and, and help. The word help is often the word um, that was used uh, to describe when God did something miraculous and he helped his people. Um, it's, a, it's the word used for Holy Spirit. So it's a powerful word. Sometimes we get it in our head, oh, I'm just a helper. That's terrible. I don't want to be like, no, this is powerful. This is like divine, a divine helper. So you were created for that. And you were created to, um, to be able to bear children, to be able to nurture them, to be able to, to uh, raise a family. Um, so for, for the most part, you know, I know I'm talking to single ladies as well, and we'll address that as well. I, my three daughters are single, so I'll, I'll talk about that. Um, so when we talk about, uh, balancing, when we talk about, you know, what, what are we trying to balance and why are we trying to balance it from the very beginning, um, God has a mandate for us. And a lot of times when we step away from that, things get hard. Things get stressful. Um, for that reason, I want to tell you that the word balance really has no place in our Christian walk. As a matter of fact, God, um, in, in some scriptures, speaks against it you know he says 
do not have one foot in the world and one foot in uh you know in in the lord or in 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 church right do not be on the fence right do not be doing this balancing act where you're part of the world you're you're you know in some areas that's the world and then some areas you're being godlike um he says don't do it as a matter of fact um you know if if water if water could be balanced not hot not cold what would it be it would be lukewarm and that would be the water being we could say balanced so it's it's this um this word that it's it's not good god says if you're lukewarm you know he he'll spit you out he doesn't like that okay so i said all that to to, to help you understand that balance should never be our goal it should never be um what we aspire to be because to follow jesus is extreme <laughs> there's no balance about following jesus it's extreme it's it, it's not balanced okay um not the way the secular world uh would see it okay and I think that's where we get that word, that balance. We want to be balanced. That's from, that's very secular. I want you to know that Jesus gives us a word of how we should be. And that's narrow is the way. He says, it's not that way. And it's not this way. It's this way. And it's narrow. Narrow is the way. To follow Jesus, there are a lot of things that are not going to fit into that. They're not going to jive into that, that you're going to have to shed. Okay. So to follow Jesus and go the narrow way, you're talking about no balance at all. Uh, to, to claim that you have balance is to claim that you can do it. And the reason we come to Jesus is because we can't, we cannot do it. Right. So living for God is extreme narrow is the way and it's not about balance you know what it's about it's about dying it's about dying it, it's the gospel no longer i live but he lives in me it's about leaving it all behind and that is often very um difficult for people who are still very uh, worldly minded and church, there are a lot of churches that are worldly minded to grasp. It's not about you. You cannot be selfish. You cannot think that you're going to go follow Jesus, go the narrow way and think you can hold on to some things. Okay, so let's start there. Let's start with that. Following Jesus is extreme. To live for him is to die, to die to self. That is where you need to start. That's the foundation of that. Somewhere along the way, you have built a house of cards. A and you want me to say, be careful where you put that one. Um, you know, watch, watch it on this side. Be careful. When I... All I want to do is just flick it so that you can see that what you have is not good. It, it, it's not going to stand within time, much less generations, much less spiritual, eternal stuff. You need to have a foundation in Jesus. When you start there, everything that you do is solid and you're seeking him. Okay. Uh, so what does that mean that you ask him that you ask him he's and, and he's going to tell you see you've got to be able to to fear god more than you fear not having a paycheck okay this is this is tough but i'm talking to my daughters okay i don't my daughters my biological daughters are leaders they're strong right now in their early 20s one not even 20 yet could lead thousands of people could lead a big organization 
could lead a ginormous church, could lead an army. I, they've got the intelligence, creativity, the, the gusto, the internal drive. They've got their mama's heart. More importantly, they have the Holy Spirit and they are fierce. But when they get married, here's the thing, when they get married, because they're beautiful women of God, just like they gave their life away to Jesus, they have to, at one point, if by their choice, the man that they choose, they, when they fall in love, they will give their life away to that man. And then they will, whatever children come their way, they will serve sacrificially to that family for the rest of her life. And that's going to look different as, you know, as uh, years go by, you know, a mom of a newborn is going to look, is going to require more sacrifice, more time than a mother of a 15 or a 20 year old or a 30 year old. It's going to look different year to year. But the outcome, but the heart behind it is the same. You should be for your husband and for your children before anything else. No matter how talented, creative, and intelligent you are. And most of the women, honestly, most of the women at the table, most of the women that listen to this, you are. You are a professional. You are intelligent. You are multi-talented. You are amazing. And that's why this message is tough to hear. Because you know what that means? It's setting your will, your dreams, everything that you want to do aside for the sake of your husband and for the sake of your children. Your children need you, okay? This is difficult. This is something I wrestled with myself. I was so frustrated. I would cry. But you know what? There are moments and we talk about uh, quality versus quantity time with our family. Oh, but we have dinners together. We have uh, quality time versus quantity. Quality time doesn't even show up until you've had the quantity, okay? So, so I don't think you know what, what you're saying. I, I, I think you want to believe that, but that's a lie. I don't believe it. Um, I want you to understand that a lot of you, if you are plugged in to a, a job, a career, or whatever else your 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 goals and dreams or whatever, right now, and your kids are little, you are giving your best somewhere else. You're giving your very best to a, a company that may not even be around in a few years, that may not even hire, you know, keep you on, on staff in the next few years, you know? You're giving your very best to them, your best hours, your best energy. Meanwhile, your family's, you know, growing up, changing and evolving all around you. And you're doing this, you know, paddling, 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 keeping your head above water. Everything's fine. Praise God. You know, we're going to church. And you need to stop. You need to stop that because you know what? That is a hamster wheel. That's the rat race. That's very American. You are an American woman, but it's not biblical and it's not godly. Okay. Now, some of you, again, like I said, are single, single moms, widows. We've got all kinds of different, you know, it's a spectrum. Uh, some of you, your husbands are, are horrible. They're not saved and they want you to work and they believe you should work and so there are you know if you've got to listen to what your husband is to say you got to give your heart to the lord your heart's got to be in your family your heart's got to be in your children in in your husband uh, a wise wife holds the secrets of her husband you know, she's got time to listen to that, to listen to the frustrations at work, to listen to, to be a safe place for her husband to land. Okay. Um, you're his secret keeper, not some other woman at work or somewhere else. 
you've got, you've got him. You are his ride or die, okay? But for those of you that are single and single moms and all of that, God can still um, give you. Holy Spirit is a genius. And he, God is ready to download, you know, because you're thinking money, you're thinking practical stuff, right? You know, the practical stuff I, is so short, you know, because they grow up so fast. So it might mean you don't get name brands. It might mean that you don't live where you are living. It might mean that you uh, drive a piece of a car instead of a really nice car. It might mean a lot of things that you don't want them to mean, but that's what it means. It might, it means that you have to die to self, that you have to not be selfish. Those things, I don't even know about name brands. It, those things don't matter. Okay. You have to, you have to realize that it's about these children that are growing up around you and they need you. And God will give you the creativity, maybe to, to start your own business, a business that, you know, you could do with your children, whether it's cupcakes, whether it's, you know, there are plenty of things that I did every time it was from home. There were uh, times where I did have to step out of the house. My husband, we just kind of uh, juggled that. He was able to be home at the time that I was gone. But even then, my husband knew they need mama. <laughs> you know, I'm, um, especially my daughters, you know, they need mama. He needed his wife. And uh, what was happening and what happens many times is that we are very quick to answer the phone for our boss. You know, I, I did that many times for my bosses, whoever, right away yes and i get it done and a call from my husband was often overlooked a call from my husband you know was like oh, felt like a burden right i know if you ladies are going to be real and agree with me but the point is that i was getting to that point and, and you got to understand this in the great scheme of things you know whatever a husband you have whatever type of husband i'm, I'm not talking about abusive or anything like that fearing for your life you know, you got to be safe. You got to be smart about that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about husbands that may not be that great. Okay. He's not your Superman, but guess what? If someone came against you physically, he would lay his life down without a thought because that's how God created him. He has that inside of him. It's an instinct. He's going to protect and die for you and your kids. But yet, you are not available to him. You can't make yourself available to him. You can't answer his calls, make his priorities more important than any other man's priorities, any other boss priorities, okay? So you see the dilemma that you fall into when you fall into the way the world operates, okay? I believe that Holy Spirit can give you ideas for businesses, can give you ideas to provide for that moment in time for those years um you know it, like i said every year is going to look different you you have to go to him and you have to you know get the cards off the table and say okay god what do i do how do i start but that starts with time with him and when we're doing this and when we're paddling and we're in the hamster world the rat race we don't have time for him we don't have time for him to download ideas brilliant ideas that he's um you know uh ready to give you i i see you beautiful smart gifted ladies and i see you using those thing those talents in other places i'm like oh you know what how awesome if they could use that now now for the kingdom of god now you know to provide for their family in a different way that includes the whole family i always had my my kids with me riding in the car carrying stuff learning how to talk to people they knew how to be quiet in front of people they knew how to re you know be able to communicate respect they learned all of that from being around me being around me seeing how i dealt in tough situations when people were you know unfair to me or mean to me they were part of it all they were not a uh, protected uh, from that from real life um and that's what makes them strong and independent i i i know i know that this is tough information i this is one of the longest you know uh geo responses probably you're gonna get but 
I wanted you to know my heart. More important than you, um, than you liking me, liking what I just said, is that I give you truth because it is truth that sets you free, okay? And some of you are being set free right now. In Jesus' name, you're being set free, okay? Um, I also want to let you know that there's plenty of examples in the Word of God of women. Um, you know, there's Abigail who had a horrible husband, yet she chose. It, it, life is about choices and decisions. She chose to do the, the right thing for her household. She chose wisely. Um, you know, there's just uh, so many. I, you know, when I was doing this, I thought of, of Jeremiah. Jeremiah always the prophet Jeremiah in the Bible, there was, there was one time where, you know, he was kept in a dungeon. He was done horrible things to, because he, he always spoke truth. He always spoke what God told them to speak. And so they were going into battle and the Kings were wanting to hear from God. Do we go into this battle? Should we go there and be part of this? And they took Jeremiah out of the dungeon and they put him in front of several kings and said, now you better tell us. And they said, you better tell us, you know, that we're going to be successful uh, because otherwise you're going back in the dungeon, you know, that's it. <laughs> and, and yet they wanted to hear the truth, but no, they didn't. They wanted to hear that what they had in their mind, in their heart to do, that they just wanted to hear they were going to be blessed and they were going to be successful. And they wanted Jeremiah, which was the voice of God, to tell them that. And Jeremiah, I mean, I can just, that oh, that verse just makes me weep because I can just picture him. He, he had no choice, no choice to tell them the truth, but because he loved God so much. Not because he was forced or he was at gunpoint. He loved him so much. And he said, no, you're going to go into battle and you're going to die. Don't do it. And they said, okay, Jeremiah, get out of here. You don't know what you're talking about. Because they wanted to do what they wanted to do and they had it set in their minds. So I want you to think about those things that you're doing now. Is it truly God or is it truly your rebellion, truly your desire your selfishness to be in a position that you are the money or is it because you're completely surrendered to God you know and, and you have to be real with yourself you have to get to that point get to the root of where you're at where you're at right now why are you there what happened follow Jesus Follow Jesus. Following Jesus is extreme. You have to die. You have to die. And that happens daily. So I'm going to be praying for you ladies because I know how difficult it is, especially in the in this world. And um, I pray that my daughters will be daughters that, that see no matter how great they are, no matter how talented they are, that they can put their will their dreams aside for that of their husband, for that of their children that they're raising. I'm praying for single moms and widows that can do wisely, that will say, you know what, we'll suffer for a little while. We will put things, I'll put things on hold for a little while as I'm raising my children. That may mean moving in with somebody. That may mean taking a part-time job instead of a full-time job. That may mean getting on some assistance until you're able to have time with your kids. I, I don't know what that would look like. It would look differently for everyone. And you can only imagine our God is limitless. There are plenty of ways he's going to speak to you. Plenty of things that he's going to tell you and ideas he's going to give you. Okay. I'm talking to you like you're my daughters. Okay. I love you. I love you. Follow, follow Jesus. Narrow is the way. I love you. See you at the table.